Well, welcome everybody to the big podcast. I am Nichelle Turner. I think I need to sanitize my screen to start out because uh, wow. apparently it looks like two people have been out in them COVID streets. Spice isn't at home. Shaq just wow. waltzed in all late. So we've had mystery guests the past couple of weeks, right? And they've gone really well. So I thought we should keep the trend going. And once again, we've got another big mystery guest. So Spicy, we, I got, I got to give Shaq a couple clues to see if he can figure out who this okay. mystery guest is. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll never get it. He'll never get it. Let's get to this because the big mystery guest is waiting, and I want to um, okay. see if if Shaq can get this. All right, so Shaq, our first clue is this: this person is a former member of the Orlando Magic. D Scott, what's up, D Scott? D Scott, is that you? No. All right, let me give you oh, clue number okay. two. This person once brought you to tears on national TV. My mama? <laughs> Your mama played for the magic? <laughs> <laughs> brought me to tears? Who? <laughs> brought you to tears on national oh, no, TV. No, no, no way. No way. Okay, here's the third clue. No way. This person was born in Kingston, Jamaica. Patrick Ewan? <laughs> Big mystery guest, are you there? Oh, it's my idol. Big Pat, what's up, baby? I think I think the Jamaica part gave it away. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. Pat, I <laughs> Pat, I know me and you had some tough battles, but you was always my favorite player. I don't think you know this. I wore number 33 in high school and college because of you. Oh. I never told you this, but I, I'm telling you this now. You was always my favorite. Like I know we had some tough battles, but my father's Jamaican, so you know, we kind of had the same blood going through us. So all the stuff, all the times I was going at you, it wasn't that I didn't like it. It's because I knew you was the number one shot that and me just wanted to, you know, <laughs> you know, me just wanted to come take that, you know? <laughs> hey, we we did have we did have some great battles. Uh, and, you know, it's funny. I, I always, when I'm talking to these kids when I, uh, that I'm recruiting or that I'm coaching, and we all talk always talk about um, my era. And we talk about Shaq. And, you know, they see Shaq the way he is now, but they don't remember. They didn't see Shaq when, when he first came into the league. And I, I can remember there's been a lot of days where, you know, I, either I would score and then Shaq would take off running and I'm pointing to somebody, <laughs> yeah. pick him up, yeah. pick him up. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. They don't remember how big and athletic he was. But, no, we did have some great battles and it, it was always great to, to play against you. When you play against people that are that are great, you you all that always brings make you bring out the, uh, your greatness. Pat, I have a question. How come you never smiled at me? You never shook my hand. You never said nice move. You never did anything that like you just used to get the ball with that mean little. You used to face me up, jab me left, and then shoot that damn jumper that I could never block. I'm like, damn, my idol don't like me or something. You never smiled at me, bro, ever. Hey, it's not that I didn't like you. I just when I when I when I'm when I step on the court. It's like my alter ego, you know, the alter ego kicks in. So I got the game face on, you know, no smiling. You know, I even did it with Alonzo and Dikembe and, you know, they're all Hoyas. You know, I get the game face on and I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be the, the human destroyer. But playing against somebody like you, your size, the things that you could do. I remember the first time we, we played against each other at the Garden. Man, uh, I think Herb Williams came in. Uh, was I was playing the four, and he was playing the five. And he went for a steal, and you dunked on me. I said, oh, my God. This this young man, is he, he really is strong. Shaq, do you remember that game, too? I, I do. So I mentioned this a, a couple year, a couple, couple months ago about when I was playing against Jordan, how terrified I was. There was only a couple players that, that when I first went up against him, I was terrified. Patrick Ewan, terrified. Because I grew up watching him. Because, you know, he knows I'm from New Jersey. I had, I had a pair of uh, orange and, and blue Ewans. I actually thought I was Ewan. I was terrified of Mike. Oh, man. I was terrified of getting dunked on by Dominique. And I was terrified of David Robinson. But, like, when I, you know, the play he mentioned that, like, I dunked on him and I had the face like I was mean, but I was like, oh, my God, I just don't go back to you. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Uh, that's dope, man. I'm always hard on these big guys because I want them to play. Like, I get my greatness from you. 
and David and Akeem and all those guys. And these these big guys now, they we, we try to stay on them, but they think we hating. Give me your honest assessment. And I don't care if you hurt people's feelings. Give me your honest assessment of the, the of the big guys in the league today. Good question. Well, you know, the league, the league has definitely changed. Um, you know, in our era, as big were in the blocks, uh, dunking, face up, hook shots. In this era, most bigs are at the three point line, or or they're picking and rolling and catching lobs. So it's it's definitely uh, have changed. Uh, there's no no one like you and I playing uh, playing in this era. Everybody's like you know Jokic or you know Embiid. Embiid does a little bit of both. Um, you know that's the way that the game is played right now. Everyone is at the three point line, and maybe when if we were uh, coming out in this era, we probably would be at the three point line as well. But like you said, we learn from you know Bill Russell, a key. Uh, sorry, not uh, Bill Russell. Uh, you know, uh, Moses Malone, Kareem, all those guys. Kareem with the sky hook, uh, Moses with his post up, face up. Um, we learn from those guys. And, you know, these guys, they they learn from, you know, the, the European bigs. They learn from Dirk Nowinski uh, with the Dirk face up, uh, step back off the, off, off the, the, the wrong foot. Um, they learn from those guys. So it's, it's definitely different. Um, Patrick, can I, can I ask you a question? Um, because you know, Shaq, he never, he doesn't suffer any fools. He says what he says. He means what he says. He's the, I said what I said guy. But recently, um, Shaq has been on the record saying that the Knicks won't be back until they get home court in the first round, even though they've have they have their best record now since 2013, they've got a 20 and 10 all-star in Julius Randle. And a lot of people feel like that they are back. So what do you think about that? Or, Shaq, first of all, I don't know if you're still saying they're not back, but Patrick, do you think the Knicks are back? Um, I think they are back. I think Tom Thibodeau's done an outstanding job with them. Julius Randle, he's a throwback. Um, you know, he does it. He, he'll post up. He'll shoot the three. He'll pass. Uh, he's he's a throwback type of player. Shaq's looking <laughs> like he don't believe you. <laughs> he's a throwback type of player, you know. And I'm happy for the Knicks, and I'm happy for Tom. Tom was he coached the Knicks when I was playing. We also coached together in Houston, so I'm very happy for him, and I'm proud of, that the Knicks is doing very well. I got a question for you, Pat. How, how come you always wanted to fight during the playoffs? <laughs> Didn't he want to fight? You <laughs> always was trying, trying to come to blows on the playoffs. Like, why, why, why was you doing that, man? I was trying to kill somebody. Why don't you try loving somebody sometimes? <laughs> you know, like Shaq said, I got that Jamaican blood in me, so <laughs> I wasn't going to take no hits. Um, you know, and it wasn't just the playoffs. And the player, you know, you go through the whole regular season to get to that point in, 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 in which is the playoffs. That's when everything counts. Um, yeah. And, you know, I wasn't going to take no no crap from anybody. So you know, I, I was just out there trying to uh, kick butt and take name and hopefully to, to you know, I wasn't fortunate enough to, to win, uh, win a ring like Shaq or, or Michael, but that was uh, my ultimate goal was to get there and try to destroy anybody who was in my way. Yeah. I love it. And, Pat, uh, I want to apologize to you. I know this incident is old, but it, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I know what you're uh, going to say. When you was in the garden and the people were trying to stop you, oh, yeah. that rubs me the wrong way. Because, <laughs> listen, listen, like, I, I know the Knicks are back and all that, but Patrick Ewing, you and guys like Charles Oakley and what y'all did, y'all built y'all built Madison Square Garden. So Absolutely. players like you should never, ever have problems going to Madison Square Garden. Like, for example, when I go to Staples Center with my kids during, during the damn Backstreet Boys, oh, they lets me in. <laughs> oh, hey, Shaq, how you doing? <laughs> you got some tickets now. I ain't got nothing. All right, Big Diesel. You know what I'm saying? So I want to apologize on behalf of the people who act like they don't know who the hell Patrick Ewing is. He's right, Patrick. Well, you know, that, that was then, you know, uh, Mr. Dolan and myself, we, are, we have already talked about it. We've already squashed it. And you are right. Uh, myself and Charles Oakley, John Starks, we we are. You all built that place. You know, it is what it is. I, I've let it go. I've, I've moved on. And now all I can worry about now is trying to get me uh, another Shaquille O'Neal or another Patrick Ewing to help me uh, to win a, a championship. 
By the way, you are you're entering your fifth year now as the head coach at Georgetown, and Dope. we were filling uh, we were filling out our brackets, our NCAA brackets this year here on the Big Podcast. And both of these guys here, it didn't matter who y'all were matched up against. They said, "I'm going <laughs> with my boy Patrick Ewing. We're going with him. We don't care." Um, what has this journey been like for you so far? Uh, it's been a great journey. Yeah. Um, you know, started with. Uh, I, I spent 15 years trying to be a head coach in the NBA and, and was not given an opportunity. I've, I, I, I think I've had, I got three interviews and none of them worked out, but you know, I wasn't just grown I just try to use all of that to, to become, uh, to be the best uh, coach I can possibly be, possibly be, possibly be, uh, work on the things that I didn't do well or, or, uh, I wasn't good at. Um, and when JT three was let go here at Georgetown, coach Thompson uh, jr. Called me and told me I should try to get an interview for this job. And at first I wasn't, uh, I was apprehensive about doing it, but he talked me into it and I called, uh, president Jack DeJoy and asked, could I get an interview? Uh, did a great job on the interview and here I am the coach. You know, it, it's funny that it's, it's come full circle. And my job here is to 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 uh, be the role model or the spokesman that that Coach Thompson was to me. Try to help these kids not only be the best athlete that athletes that they can be, but also role model and and student that they can be, and, to, and try to uh, put uh, I guess pay it forward. You know, do my part in trying to help the help our society uh, with these young kids uh, move on to and try to make their lives better. Pat, let me ask you a question. Uh, we are the same people because uh, I am I'm who I am because of you. So when you're dealing with these these youngsters as a coach, I know we're fierce people. Do you have to change the way you talk to these kids? Because I, I hate to say it, <laughs> they sensitive. They sensitive. Like, I be talking to my kids sometimes. Like, man, y'all are lucky. My father would have knocked the hell out of my ass. <laughs> you know so, I mean, I know you're fierce yeah. and I know you're Jamaican. Do you have to, like, really worry about how you talk to the kids so you don't break them down? Um, no, you know, I, I think that, you know, especially one of, one of the things I talk about to these kids uh, or their parents when I'm talking to them is that a, a person is not only going to let you get on them uh, hard if they really know and understand that you care about them. Um, so you, you have to, and you don't treat everyone the same. Everyone is different. So there are certain people that you can get on real hard and they can take it. And there are others that you have to, you know, pull them aside and get on them then or talk to them softly uh, for them to understand. Some people, if you if you raise your voice too much, they'll shut you down. They, they'll, they'll start thinking about, well, what am I going to eat after, after this practice or after this Correct. game? You know, worry <laughs> about other things. And, you know, so you, you pick and choose or you learn, you know, how to talk to these kids. Um, so, I, you know, that's one of the things that I think that I've learned uh, in my four years here at Georgetown is, is when and how uh, or who – to, uh, to get on hard and who, you know, you got to, you know, pull them aside and get on them that way. Patrick, I do have a question for you because last week um, we were talking about um, the blasphemy that Jeannie Buss was saying uh, about the top five Lakers of all time, the top five that, that meant the most to the franchise. And she left Shaq out of that bunch, which I think is crazy. At the time, Shaq said he didn't care, but I think he spent this week showing us that he cared a little bit about what <laughs> she said with his uh, Instagram post. But I want to ask, and, and uh, Shaq, I actually want to ask you this. I want to know, since we've got Patrick Ewing here, who are your top five Knicks of all time? All right, let me go. Pat at the five. Mm-hmm. Willis at the three. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the four. <laughs> at the four. Willis Reed. Mm-hmm. Oakley at the three. The guy who uses the big words. Uh, what's his name? The uh, commentator that uses the, the the big crazy words. Patrick Ewan, the stupid Tefindivis on that baseline jumper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Walt, Walt at the two, and at the one, at the one, I'm gonna go with. Uh, he was a he was a senator. Come on, Pat, help me out. Bill Bradley. Yes. Bill Bradley. Bill yeah. Bradley. So no Carmelo Anthony. Damn, I forgot about Carmelo. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna trade Bill Bradley for Carmelo. <laughs> yeah, I, my bad. But listen to me, and 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 I say this, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I was never a Nick fan. I was only a Patrick Ewing fan. Oh, there we go. That makes sense. There we go. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. You, you got to respect it. I don't. I didn't like when the Knicks played the Pistons, but you got to respect Pat. You got to. So Pat, you never knew I wore thirty three because of you. <laughs> 
No, I did not. Come on, bro. Seriously? No, I did not. I, I, I saw you in high school. I saw you playing in high school, uh, and I saw that you had 33. Then I saw you uh, at LSU with 33, but I did not know it, it was because of me. Oh. And I, re- I, feel, I feel honored. Well, thank you, but th- this is what happened. So my dad, he first told me how to play. He told me all Kareem, all Bill, all Will, right? And, you know, that was old school. Like, he had me doing that damn ugly-ass hook shot. But then <laughs> you guys was playing Georgetown. He's like, come here. You need to watch him. He from Jamaica. I know his pee. You need to watch him. And I'm seeing you at Georgetown. And you was mean. You and the dude with the headband. You was dunking on people, kicking on people. And you had that jump hook. And I was like, oh, my God. That's who I want to be like. So that's why I started wearing number 33 because I watch you. And uh, what's the other guy who you used to play with? The ball head guy? Michael Graham. Michael that Graham. was mean. He was, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you and him, I was like, man. My dad was like, see, you got to play mean. You too nice in there. You too nice in there. <laughs> hey, look, I, I played against you. You were not nice. Well, I got it from you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Patrick, do you want to weigh in on your top five? Um... My top five, wow. Well, definitely, you know, Walt, um, Earl, Earl at the at the two, Earl of Pearl, mm-hmm. Carmelo kind of at the three. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess me at the five, mm-hmm. and uh, at the four. You're like I can't pick five. Charles Smith. <laughs> Charles Smith missing all them goddamn layups. Charles Smith, man. I wanted to kick the TV, man. <laughs> oh man, I'm trying to think who, who you know, Oak was a great was a great four for me. He he who was a hit man. He he, oh, t- yeah, he, he took was. care of anything he, that we needed to be get yep. uh, to be taken care of. Um and Mace. You know, when Macy played the, the 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 four and the three, um I can't. I can't really say who I would who I would have, who I would have at the at the four. That's all because, right. Because uh, we've had some, we've had some great guys that 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 played both four and five uh, for the Knicks. It was one of the historic franchises. Mm-hmm. Um, Kenny Walker. <laughs> Pat, before I ask you this question, I want you to say yes. I promise to be honest, no matter what. So say it. Uh oh, here we go. Uh-oh. I'm always honest. Okay. No, but no. Go ahead and say it. Yes, I promise to be honest. <laughs> okay, so when Charles Smith missed all them <laughs> damn layups and you went to the locker room, did you want to whoop his ass in the locker room? <laughs> no, he ain't get fouled. I was like, no. Nah. Like, no, nah, he ain't get fouled. No, you got to dunk it, man. You got to dunk it, man. You 6'11", man. You up there lollygagging around, man. You got to dunk it. I, I, Pat, I tell you what, you're nicer than me because I would have had to put them hands on them in the locker room. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> hey, look, Pat. Pat and Shaq. Can y'all please tell everybody how hard it is to be the only player to have the most triple doubles like Russell Westbrook? Wow. I mean, that yeah. is that's that's hard to do. That is amazing. I, I think uh, out of my career, I played seventeen years. And I think I've only had one triple double. Shaq may have no. had more, uh, more than wow. one. No way. I think I've only had one. Pat didn't pass. Wow. Two dribbles, <laughs> two dribbles, jump hook, or two dribbles fade away right in your face. Yeah. Patrick Ewing, I wish you could stay with us all hour. I really do, because this has been great. And I love seeing the big fella turn into, you know, a fanboy over here. It really is sweet to see. You made my day, Pat. I appreciate you. And if you haven't seen the video of him crying, that video is on YouTube of him crying. I cry. I cry when? On NBA TV, you, just, you saw him and you started crying and you started talking about he was your idol. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> we thank you so much for joining us today. This really, really was fun. Will you come back and visit with us again? Yes, I will. And it was my pleasure uh, coming on. Shaq, he, like he, you know, he, he talked about when we first uh, came on the air that we've had some great battles yeah. uh, when he was in Orlando, when he was in uh, with, with the Lakers. Well, you know, every time you play against him, you have to make sure you get your sleep, eat your Wheaties, uh, <laughs> because you know this this man was big, he was strong, he was athletic, and if you if you came in there soft, he was gonna let you know. But it was it was great to be on, and I'd like to thank y'all very much. I love get that. it from you, brother. I appreciate you. Respect, Sean. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much, Pat. We'll see you again soon. I'm glad. Have a good one.